this is why, look, and, and here's the thing. You might say, well, why do I even want to bother? Why do I even want to make effort? Well, here's the way I look at it. You know, and, and it's, it's a one-sided communication. Look, sometimes you might want to jump in and do phone sex with a guy. I'm not here to judge that. That's, you know, that can certainly be kind of a, can be an intimate thing. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, all right, let's talk about those six signs he only wants to sleep with you. Now, what's interesting, I saw a comment uh, in the beginning of this, uh, thinking all along the lines that he only wants to sleep with you as opposed to sleep with anyone else versus he only wants sex with you. And we're going to be talking about that version versus the other version. So I'm glad that was brought to my attention because I do recognize that the title can be a little bit confusing. So let's just face it. Human beings are an absolute mess when it comes to dating, mating, and relating these days. Let me repeat that. Human beings are a complete mess. It is a shit show out there when it comes to dating, mating, relating for a variety of different reasons that would go as long as uh, the, the notes would go from here to the moon if we had to calculate them all together. And I think one of the primary reasons centers around sex. And I think this has to do with the barrier of entry to sex, the barrier of entry to sex. And what I mean to say is, um, well, let's think back hundreds of years ago, for the most part, if two people liked each other and they wanted to sleep together, they had to get married. They basically, that was the prerequisite to having sex. And quite frankly, courtships back then only lasted a nanosecond. What I mean to say, people got married sometimes literally within days of meeting each other, weeks within meeting each other. It was very rare that it went much longer than a few months of knowing one another before they had sex or uh, they, before they had sex because they had to get married ahead of time. That was the predominant prerequisite. Now, this wasn't always, this isn't an absolute, but this happened to be the predominant narrative. And certainly things changed around the 1960s with the advent of birth control and certainly the women's uh, movement more to the sense of their freedom of equality, uh, certainly in the workplace and whatnot. And at the same time, women became more empowered. And certainly there could be the narrative that, you know, while men tend to have sex just purely for the pleasure of it, and women wanted it more from an emotional perspective, that certainly has changed in the last few years that women, and, and by the way, I'm not here to judge whether or not you have sex with someone is a good or bad thing. I'm just going to say that when we have physical contact with someone at a sexual nature, it can create a lot of problems later on down the road, which I'll address in a moment. But when I come back to the narrative prior to the 60s, was if you wanted to get laid, you had to get married. Well, now, and then I was thinking about the time when I was in my 20s, around the, the 80s, if anyone knows the 1980s, that period of time, that's when I was single, or first single in my life as an adult. And what was interesting is back then, it was coming off the tail, there was this tail end of, you know, women giving, having sex to soon, they were considered easy. They were considered easy. So back then, I remember dating was, uh, at least when you really like someone, you actually took, as a man, we actually took time to get to know someone versus jumping into the bed with them. If we wanted to jump into bed with someone back in the 70s, 80s, or 90s, it was real simple. You would go out to a nightclub and, and thank, well, I said thankfully, this doesn't sound right, but certainly if there was alcohol involved, a woman's judgment was oftentimes impaired. And I, I'm sorry that I'm laughing at this. I'm laughing back at my own behavior back then. And it was quite, e the barrier of entry was easy. One or two shots of alcohol was about the easiest barrier to entry. And this is where a lot of one night stands happen. Now, what's interesting with the advent of the internet, and certainly in now we're talking about the late 90s, the 2000s, and certainly to today, the new barrier of entry happens to be just at a swipe, not, not barrier entry of sex, but just the barrier of entry to get to meet someone is just to swipe away. And what's fascinating, when I went through my divorce in the um, 
early 2000s. I'll be candid with you ladies, it was rather simple. I, it really didn't take much effort on my part to get laid on the first, second or third date. Not that I was in a state of, of being disingenuine or whatnot. I certainly, right after my divorce, I know in my particular case, I was an emotional train wreck. I was an emotional train wreck. And I was thirsty for attention, both on an emotional level, but mostly at a physical level. And I was quite shocked at how easy it was to have sex compared to the 80s prior to when I got married, because women seem to have more boundaries up and these boundaries have seemed to drop. Okay. Now I'm not here to say this is right or wrong. I'm just observing what's happening today. So I believe now coming back to what I shared before, you know, sex is a very intimate or can be a very intimate experience. And if you think about the three reasons to have sex, one would be for making babies. Although most of us at midlife aren't in that phase in our life. And certainly with birth control and, and contraception and whatnot and um, condoms and whatnot, that's probably less likely. So the need for making babies doesn't exist as much. So the other two reasons are uh, pleasure and intimacy, pleasure and intimacy. Now, intimacy is into me, you see, in other words, really getting emotionally close with someone. And yet, sadly, most people are just operating from the pleasure base and not really creating the necessary intimacy prior to having sex, prior to having sex, creating that emotional bond with one another. And this is one of the reasons why men might only be in it for sex, because they're in it for the pleasure. So in a few minutes, I'm going to share these six signs, these six signs of how to determine which are the guys only in it for sex or which are the guys who are actually going to go deeper. And we're going to talk about also how to create that in your relationship so you have a better chance if this is what you want. By the way, it, ladies uh, or gentlemen who are watching this, if you're only in it for sex, that's okay. You're entitled to do what you want. I'm here to encourage a different, or I'm here to encourage more awareness because quite frankly, the minute we're physically, at least predominantly more so women than men, women tend to not always bond through sex because one of the things that release in their body is oxytocin and oxytocin is a bonding agent that bonds you to another human being. Whereas men don't seem to release that in the same degree as women do. So on some level, it behooves people, or at least behooves women in particular, to be more selective on who they have sex with because you can bond with them. And it, and quite frankly, dating already inherently has a huge issue built into it, which in, that piggybacks on this piece of when you bond with someone, because most human beings on some level are suffering on the inside, feeling not good enough, not lovable, not likable. I'm going to repeat that. Not good enough, not lovable, not likable. And dating can trigger that like nobody's business, especially if we've experienced some level of rejection, whether it's, you know, someone not returning a phone call. Um, let me reframe that. You just started communicating with someone and they just disappear. You start dating with someone and then they go distant from you and they start to pull away. Or worse, you've invested six weeks, 12 weeks with someone only to have them disappear. This is partially because if we're hurting on the inside, dating will trigger this even more so and it will amplify this. This is one of the reasons why I wrote my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? It's a journey of personal development, self-help, and spiritual work so that if you do find yourself in a position where you might be triggered, you're less likely to get triggered because self-love is a vaccination to emotional chaos. Let me repeat that. Self-love is a vaccination to emotional chaos. Whether it's, it's not the Moderna, it's not the Pfizer, it's not the Johnson & Johnson, it's certainly not the AstraZeneca. It is doing it for yourself. It's like giving yourself a shot of love because that will prepare you for God forbid, if you find yourself in a situation with someone is only in it for the sex. So again, my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? There's a link below to get the book. So let's jump into those. So now coming back to, there are men who are serious about a relationship. 
and men that are not. Sadly, the vast majority of human beings are very unconscious to the mechanics of a healthy, happy relationship. And they typically operate from the place of chemistry equals relationship success. If you're not familiar with my relationship iceberg, I highly recommend you check this out. As you can see above the waterline says attraction and it says chemistry. That's the sex piece. Below the waterline is compatibility, shared values, blendable lifestyles, and more importantly, emotional maturity. Some of you ask, what's an example of shared values? Well, let me give you an example. I think if here in the United States predominantly, I'm going to speak to, is, hey, look, if you love Donald Trump and would die on the sword for Donald Trump and the other person loves Bernie Sanders and AOC and would die on the sword for them, chances are they don't share the same values, okay? Let's say somebody goes to church five days a week and carries their Bible with them and somebody's an atheist chances are they don't share the same values. So that's an example of shared, just, just gives you a short example of shared values. Right now, vaccines, no vaccines. That's an example of someone's values. Blendable lifestyles is can your lives fit in with one another? Can your lives fit in with one another? Ladies, many of you are suckling on the nipple of the fantasy that if we love each other, magic fairy dust will make our incompatibility work. It's amazing how magic fairy dust can make incompatibility work, especially with uh, lifestyle differences. And I'm talking about major differences. But Jonathan, if we love each other, we can make it work. Men don't operate that way. Ladies, you're the ones who tend to operate that way more so than men. And emotional maturity, let's face it. The most human beings have terrible relationship skills and emotional maturity. In fact, if you haven't seen this chart, before, and this is not a fact, this is an opinion, I believe roughly 20% of the population has clinical issues. And while I state here 20% of the population might be emotionally healthy, I'm being rather generous, most humans are dysfunctional. This is why, look, and, and here's the thing, you might say, well, why do I even want to bother? Why do I even want to make effort? Well, here's the way I look at it. Working with a coach like myself, our job is to put the odds in your favor so you can avoid going out with the wrong people and start choosing the right people. In fact, check out the link below to a free discovery call with me because my area of expertise is teaching you how to pre-qualify your prospect. I think of it from a sales perspective. I know that's not very romantic, but let's face it, chemistry and romance doesn't lead to relationship success. You know what leads to relationship success? True compatibility, true emotional maturity. That's what's going to lead to relationship long-term relationship success and trust. By the way, my coffee mug says, oh wait, what does it say? Don't make me go all psycho roommate on you. Don't make me go all psycho roommate on you. I broke my swear a little. You'll feel better mug. So don't let me go all psycho roommate on you on these things. <laughs> all right, let me put on my trusty glasses and I'm going to share those six things with you right now. Bump, bump, bump. All right, those six signs he only wants to sleep with you. Number one, you only see him see each other on his terms. You only see each other on his terms. I was recently speaking to a woman at the jacuzzi at the complex I, was, um, I live at. And she was just sharing with me how she had a short-lived relationship with someone, and we think it was something like eight or nine dates. All of it was on his terms. It was at his beck and call. Now, part of the problem with her is, and this is something I encourage, is ladies, if you've gone on one or two dates with a guy, you call him up and plan the third date with him. If he avoids you, that's not a good sign because someone who genuinely wants to get to know you is going to appreciate that you made effort. and He's going to want to spend time with you. But men who basically reach out on their, they, the relationship is all on their terms. There's a good chance he's only in it for the sex. And certainly the communication in between the time you see each other is very, very limited. So that's one good sign or not a good sign, but a sign. Number two, he tends to call you only at night and he doesn't want to spend the daytime with you. 
He tends to call you at night and he only wants to spend daytime with you. While that's not an absolute because people do work during the day and maybe they only have nighttime, Look at one of my favorite times to get on a phone with a woman from a dating app perspective is the first thing in the morning. I love that time of day. So certainly making time during the day and making time during the day to see someone. When someone only makes nighttime available to you, then oftentimes that's only in it for the sex versus someone who wants to actually incorporate you into their lives. Number three, they make no effort or interest in having you meet his family or, or friends or vice versa. He makes no effort or interest introducing you to his family or friends, and certainly he makes no effort into want of meeting your family and friends. That's a good sign that he's only interested in the short run and not the long run. Number three, the four, excuse me. His compliments about you are only based on your appearance. His compliments about you are only based on you. You look so hot. You look so sexy. Wow, I just want to fuck you. Well, that's going to be the next one. But basically, he doesn't really engage in the balance of your life. Most of his communication happens to be about your physical uh, pres or physicality and not your emotionality. No, you're not your intellect or your not your heart, not your mind, not your spirit. It's just your body. Okay. Number five, most of his communication is rather sexual, rather sexual. I've had this, what I'm about to share is half, I've seen this with so many uh, women I've coached over the years. They've sent me text messages with men they just began communication with. And it absolutely only sexual. It doesn't go into anything deeper other than just, and literally graphically sexual. When men are, are hyper-focused on graphically sexual, you know, and, and it's, it's a one-sided communication. Look, sometimes you might want to jump in and do phone sex with a guy. I'm not here to judge that. That's, you know, that can certainly be kind of a can be an intimate thing. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about his communication is tends to be about your appearance or about sexuality. And number six, he never really replies to your text messages or worse, he never really wants to get to know your life about things about your life. And while we might, you know, the first, second or third date, a man might seem interested you might have one of these first dates that's so amazing it's after the second or third date he's not really asking you about your life he's just talking sex he's making sexual windows he's talking about your appearance he's busy and he only makes time for you at his beck and call those are usually the these are the red flags that you should be paying attention to now what's the answer to all of this ladies I started this conversation about the barrier to entry. The barrier entry is very low. I'm here to offer a much higher barrier of enter, entry uh, to your body, and that is making him go jump through fucking hoops, making him jump through fucking hoops. If you're not familiar with my rhetoric, I always say this on every video almost. Before the penis goes inside the vagina, buy two copies of the book, Eight Dates, and read it together. Because the guy who's only in it for the sex, he's going to run away. 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 He's going to run. I can't turn fully. I'll go back this way. He's going to run away. The guy who's genuinely interested in you, who's genuinely interested in a relationship, he's now, by the way, this book is about understanding the mechanics to a healthy, happy relationship. This book is about understanding the mechanics to a healthy, happy relationship. And ladies, I know you love the idea of just sitting in your feminine energy and a guy's going to claim you. The reason why I bag on that rhetoric over and over again, because it's making a grand assumption. It's making the assumption that men know what the fuck they're doing when it comes to commitment and relationships. And I'm here to say they have no fucking clue. Most men are winging it, winging it, winging it. And look, I wish I'm your big brother. I wish I could be there on your first date with a guy with the shotgun pointed at his face going, what are your intentions with my sis, little sister? Okay. I wish I could do that. You have to do that for yourself. 
you have to basically assume on some level most men have no clue what they're doing and they basically want sex. So there's an old saying, men are the gas, women are the brakes. What that means to say is you lead by example. If you want to create real emotion, by the way, the guys who are in it for the long term are the ones who want to have an emotional connection with you. The challenge with most men is they don't know how to make this happen. This is why I continually recommend reading the book by Barbara DeAngelis, How to Make Love All the Time, How to Make Love All the Time. Now, why I'm recommending this book, along with the understanding, is most of the time we're meeting total strangers. So ladies, it's, it's rather incumbent upon you if you want to make an emotional connection. They don't, we men don't know how to do that. We need your assistance. This is why I'm recommending these books. But Jonathan, men are supposed to be the leaders of the relationship. Listen, we've got to throw out the stupid old traditional paradigm, the expectation-based paradigm. I'm here to suggest if you really want to change the narrative going forward, the whole bullshit, masculine, feminine energy, and men are, you know, like the game playing the book, the rules, then read the book, If the Buddha Dated, If the Buddha Dated. Because the understanding that real heart-centered connection starts by showing up with heart-centered connection. Now, I know a lot of you women think you show up this way, but many of you are waiting for the men to show this. And I'm here to say you're the emotional leaders of the relationship and you are in charge of your relationship destiny, not guys. How is this going to happen? With radical honesty right from the get-go. It requires interrogating people right from the get-go. Make them jump through hoops. And if, by the way, when I say interrogation, I mean it tongue-in-cheek. It's a conversation, not a confrontation. In fact, one of the things I teach in my private coaching is how to ask those better questions. Check out the link to a free discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. So how are we going to shift the narrative of the guys only wanting sex? Well, one... I recommend don't jumping into bed really quickly. Vet your prospect because I shared this in a live stream the other day. How many of you had sex with men and you don't even know their favorite color and they don't know your favorite color? They don't know much about you. These days, the barrier of entry is rather low. So it's incumbent upon you if you want something more substantial, then set the bar higher. Make them jump, make them jump through fucking hoops, okay? That's what I'm just here to suggest. All right, I think I got my I got my winded out of this, so um, I think it's time to jump in for our Q and A. By the way, uh, all right, I think this would be a good place to wrap up for tonight. I hope you found value in the six signs he only wants to sleep with you. Run from these guys. Um, I hope you found value in the analogy of the quilt I just shared, and I hope you find value in all that I share. Again, I'm a contrarian. My perspective is a little bit different than most, and I just offer, all I'm offering you is an opportunity for you to look at it from yourself. I'm not here to say I'm right. I'm not here to say this is the truth. You have to decide the truth for yourself. So I hope you did find value in this tonight. I think this will be a great place to wrap up today. And I'm going to wrap this up, this video, as I always do. First off, giving myself a big, gigantic Jonathan. Oh, really quickly. Uh, by the way, before I give myself a hug, go into the description. Check out a free discovery call with me. Check out my private group called Midlife Love Mastery. Find me on Instagram. If you want to purchase the books, I recommend they're all listed there below. All right, now I'm going to wrap up this video as I always do. First off, give myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Merrick of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow, and give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. I want to thank Sherry and Vivian and Holly and Mystique and Jennifer. And